Hi guys, this is Mike, and in this video, you are going to learn how to calculate the odds of the Sum It Up bet in the Pick 3 and Pick 4 games in the Texas Lottery. In both those games, the lottery will pick three or four balls, depending upon the game, from a bin of 10 balls numbered 0 to 9. I already explained how to calculate the odds in the base game where you bet on the particular balls drawn. But there's also a bet in both games where you bet on the total between all the balls drawn. For example, in the pick three game, if you bet on a total of zero and you win, you'll get 500 times your bet. If you bet on a total of one and win, you'll get back 166 times your bet, and so on. In the pick four game, a bet on a total of zero pays 5,000 times your bet. A bet on a total of one pays 1,250 times your bet, and so on. This is the pay table. So let's calculate the odds, shall we? So with the first ball drawn, there are 10 possibilities for the sum, zero to nine. Pretty obvious because whatever the first ball drawn is, that's what the sum is. With two balls, it starts to get a little more involved. There's one way you can have a total of zero. That one way is if the first, ball, first two balls are zero and zero, respectively. With a total of one, there are two ways you can get that total. If the first and second balls drawn are zero and one, or one and zero, respectively. Order matters. With a total of two, there are three ways. If the first two balls are zero, two, one and one, or two, zero, respectively. So I hope you're starting to see a pattern here. With a total of three, you, the number of ways is four because there are four possible balls that can give you hope after one ball, zero, one, two, or three, no matter what that first ball drawn is, as long as it's three or less, there is one ball that will get you to that desired total of three with two balls. For example, if your first, if you've been on a total of three and your first ball is a two, there's one way that you can get to that total of three with the second ball, with a ball of one. So four times one is four. So I hope you're starting to see a pattern here. It goes up by one each time. How about a total of 10? There are nine ways you can have that total of 10. The first ball would have to be anything from a 1 to a 9, and then there's one ball that will lead you to that total of 10 after the second ball. So you will have hope nine different ways after the first ball. It must be a 1 to a 9. If you have a total, if you draw a 0 in the first ball, there's no way you can get to that total of 10. Likewise, how about a total of 11? There are eight ways. That first ball must be a one, I'm sorry, it must be a two to a nine. How many balls are between two and nine, including the two and the nine? Eight. So I hope you're starting to see another pattern here. It's starting to decline by one each time. And it's going to continue that pattern of declining by one all the way to a total of 18. And if we take the total of all these combinations from cell C2 to C20, the cell right here, we get 100, which is correct because there's 10 ways you can draw the first ball and 10 ways you can draw the second ball. 10 times 10 equals 100. Now for three balls, let's start to get formulaic here. With 
a total of nine, how many ways can you get to a total of nine with three balls? You can get there, you have hope, if the sum of the first two balls is anywhere from a zero to a nine. How many ways can that happen? Well, let's take a, let's take a total of those combinations from cells C2 to C11. That represents the number of combinations that will give you hope after two balls. There are 55 combinations that will give you hope after two balls. If you have hope after two balls, there is one more ball that will get you to that desired total, in this case, nine with three balls. Let me try to put that another way. If you have a total of zero after two balls, that if that third ball is a nine, you will get to your total of nine. If how many ways can you have a total of zero after two balls? There's one way, as I already showed you. You can get to your total of nine if the total after two balls is one, then you can add eight to that to get to your total of nine. How many ways can you have a total of one after two balls? Two, as I already showed you. So we take that total starting from the cell immediately to the left and you go up nine more. So in other words, you take the sum of this range here to get the number of combinations for a total of nine with three balls. And we can just copy and paste this formula down all the way to the maximum possible total of 27 between three balls. Now, if we were to copy that up, we would get an error. Well, we don't get an error. What we have to do here is for a total with eight, we start with again with the cell to the left, and we but in this case we just go up to cell C2. So let's copy and paste that all the way up to here. So, for example, how many ways can you have a total of three? Uh, I mean, how many ways can you have a total of zero after three balls? One way, it must go zero, zero, one. How many ways can you have a total of one after three balls? There are three ways, because you can get there if the total after two balls is zero or one. It how many ways can you have a total of zero after two balls? One way. How many ways can you have a total of one after two balls? Two. So you take, so one plus two equals three. So I hope you understood that. So let's look at the total after four balls. And it's, it's again that exact same logic. We can copy and paste these formulas here for three balls, for four balls. But in this case, we extend it all the way down to a total of 36. 36 is the largest possible total you can have with four balls. Nine plus nine plus nine plus nine equals 36. Let's take that total of all our combinations for four balls and hopefully it will be 10,000. Yes, it is. Why is it 10,000? Because you're drawing four balls, each can be each has 10 possibilities. 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 equals 10,000. So that was our heavy lifting here, our combinations. So let's copy and paste these combinations for zero to 27 totals in the pick three game over to this pick three spreadsheet, which I already set up before the video started. So I'm gonna do a hard paste. So, for a total, for a bet on a total of zero, it pays 500. There's one way it can happen. What's the probability? As I already showed you, there's a thousand possible combinations in the pick three game. 10 times 10 times 10 is a thousand. 
So for the probability is simply one divided by 1,000. And we can do that for all our totals here. For example, the most likely outcome with three balls is a total of 10 or 11. I'm sorry, it is a total of 13 or 14. Each of those has 75 combinations, meaning the probability of winning is 7.5%. All right, so how about the return? The return is simply the probability of winning times what you get if you win. For example, let's say you've been on a total of seven. The probability of winning is 3.6%. You get back 13 times your bet if you win. So the expected return is 3.6% times 13, which equals 46 percent. In other words, no matter what you bet, on a total of seven, you can get expect to get back 46.8% of what you bet. The state is going to get the rest of that 53.2%, thus the reason for the lottery. It's a fundraiser for the state. So let's copy and paste that formula down for all your possible totals from zero to 27 and see what, what we're looking at. The expected return is 50% for a total of zero, 49.8% for a total of one, and we see all these totals here with a maximum of 50% going all the way down. It looks like the lowest is 43.8% for a total of 15 or 12. So that's your worst bet on a total of 15 or 12, and your best bet is, on, is equally good between totals of zero, three, 24, and 27. Thus, if someone holds a gun to your head and say and says, bet the sum it up in the pick three game, that's what you should do because you'll lose the least amount of money. Let's look at the same thing for the pick four game. Let's do a hard paste of our combinations into this pick four spreadsheet, which I already set up for you. Paste values. Here the probability is the combinations divided by 10,000. 10,000 because 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 equals 10,000. Let's copy and paste that down. So, for example, if we've been on a total of 17, we have a 6.6% .6 chance of winning. The greatest possible probability is on a total of 18 at 6.7%. So let's copy and paste that same return formula, the probability times the win, to our pick four spreadsheet and see what we're looking at. So again, we have a return of 50% for a total of zero. For a total of one, it's 50%. For a total of two, it's 50%. Same with a total of three. Then it goes down to 49.7% with a total of four. So let's just peruse this whole column here.
All right, let's resume right after the pick three game. Okay, hopefully this will be graceful. Now let's look at the pick four game. Okay, again, let's resume right after the pick three, starting with the pick four. One, two, three. Next, let's look at the pick four game. I already set up this spreadsheet here showing you the pay table, the possible totals between four balls is zero to 36. So let's do a hard copy and paste from our combination sheet of the combinations. Paste values, so here's our combinations. To get the probability, in this case we divide by 10,000 because as I explained before, there's 10,000 possible combinations in the pick four game. 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 equals 10,000. So here's our probabilities of winning. It is maximized with a total of 18 at 6.7%. As I explained before, to get the return, we multiply the probability of winning times what the bet pays. For example, if you bet on a total of four, the, the expected return is the probability of winning 0.35% times what it pays if it does win, 142. 142 times 0.35% is 49.7%. So let's copy and paste that. So here's all our expected returns, and let's just peruse that. 50% for a bet on a total of zero, 50% on a total of one, 50%, 50%, and then it's, then it's in the 40s for quite a while, all the way until we get down to a total of 33%, where it hits the 50s again. So what's the maximum? It's 50% on bets of three or less and 33 or more. What's the least it gets? Well, let's see. Here it's 48.4% for a total of nine. Does it get worse than that? Yes. It's 47.4% for a total of 15. Does it get any worse than that? Yes, for a total of 16, 44.3% which is the same for a total of 21. So there you go. If you must bet the sum it up in the pick four, I recommend you bet on a total of three or less or 33 or more. And the worst thing you could possibly do is bet on a total of 16 or 20. And let's, just for fun, let's graph these probabilities of a total from zero to 36. So let's go to insert line. And let me come bring this up here to our field of view. There we go. This is a graph of our probability between the four balls in the pick four game. And you can see it follows this Gaussian curve here. It's not exactly a Gaussian curve because it's a discrete as opposed to a continuous distribution, but it's very close. And the more balls involved in the game, the closer it will come to this bell curve or Gaussian curve which you will learn a lot more about in any course on statistics, which I highly recommend everyone take. Fascinating stuff. I love it. All right. With that, I think this video has gone long enough. I hope you understood this. I hope you heard me okay. 
And I thank you for watching. This video was brought to you by my website, wizardofodds.com, which is all about the mathematics of casino gambling, hundreds of different games, including the lottery. So yeah, thanks guys. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.